So guys, for this 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 hour of training on on Wine Ambassador, we we get to hear from awesome MSI Nell Galinsky. She, you guys, amazing heart, amazing leader, and I, I gotta tell you, for her team, I don't care if she tells you how it is. That's helping you, right? She she backs Tanya and I up a hundred percent, and we really appreciate it. Nell, she helps protect the house. She's gonna you guys take notes, go through the training. But I gotta tell you guys. I know Nell and Joe will be in Hawaii with this leadership. Nell's got her sights on it. She makes it. She makes it all happen. I'm going to tell you guys something else. If you've never been to a leadership retreat, you're missing out on things you do not understand. It's worth it to go to work. Get consistent. Get building. Take advantage of everything that's here and get there. It's going to be, I, you guys, I'm going, to, I'm going to be able to share a lot more stuff on posture, chronology, Tanya's going to be sharing more and more stuff on things, but we're going to be helping to get you guys to that next level. We're, we're trying to create millionaires, not just success, but success at points where you can not worry about budgets anymore, where you can actually help others because you totally helped yourself. We're, we're working on that direction. So anyway, now take it away. I'm going to even go on mute so I can just take it all in. Okay. All right. Thank you, Roy, for that uh, introduction. Um, I, today I'm going to talk about the history of wine in the United States uh, to kind of give you an idea of um, why wine is our number one anchor offer. Um, aside from the um, all the uh, new advantages to the uh, our wine um, uh, program that Rory just introduced, which uh, is totally amazing. I'm, I'm uh, really excited about that. But over the past 10 years, wine consumption in the United States has nearly doubled. And we've taken over uh, the number two spot from Italy, uh, the United States wine consumption. Uh, so we are number two in the world in wine consumption. Uh, France is number one, and um, uh, the United States is number two. Uh, if we compare uh, today to 40 years ago, when the bulk of American wine production ended up either in a jug or was labeled Thunderbird and was hidden in a brown paper bag and found on many uh, street corners being consumed by uh, a small group of people called winos. Um, and actually, my family used to call me a wino. When I was younger, um, none of them drank wine. Um, so I was called Little Miss Wino. Um, if we fast forward to today, all 50 states have commercial wine industries and consumption of domestic wine out, um, outweighs imports two to one. 40 years ago, a fine wine was synonymous, synonymous, synonym, can't say that word, with expensive wines. Synonymously. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> with expensive wines, um, the likes of Bordeaux, Burgundy, and Champagne. So for most Americans, it was um, a bit expensive. Um, it was unpopular because of the wino label and it was intangible. But with the rise of the American fine wine industry as um, it created a greater acceptance. Um, in other words, um, we've made it an acceptable culture uh, to most, almost everyone. European wines um, became more popular and American wines continued to improve and expand to areas outside of Napa Valley and the Sonoma Coast. The rest of the world watched closely um, and in just 40 years this country managed to create its own wine culture. Uh, but America's wine history reached uh, much farther back um, than the 1970s and covers much more brown than the West Coast. In many places, the remnants of 500 years of wine growing and consumption are still evident. Ohio still grows catawba, the native grape that was the centerpiece of the first commercial winery in the United States in the 1830s. Uh, North Carolina's uh, Roanoke Island is still home to a 400-year-old uh, Scoopernog wine, uh, vine uh, trained by the Englishman that washed up there in the late 1500s and Texas whose winemaking history dates back to the mid 1600s may just be the next great American wine producing state. Wine has become an important part of American culture. Now I have a timeline um, to set the stage for uh, the uh, wine in America. Um, in 1000, uh, Vikings made their way to this side of the Atlantic and named North America Vinland for the density of the vine cover. 
in uh, 1562, uh, French Huguenots barge uh, in on Jacksonville, Florida, and make America's first known wines from the native variety of the Muscadine grape um, called um, Scoopernog. In 1865, or excuse me, it's uh, 1885, Englishmen washed up on the East Coast and Roanoke Island's mother vineyard is established. Uh, Sir Walter Riley describes the vine scene as covering every shrub and uh, climbing the tops of high cedars. In 1619, after issues with native Vitas uh, Lambrusca, uh, wines tasting too foxy or rather reminiscent of farm animals, Lord Delaware brings in his first um, Vitas vinifera vines in from Europe uh, through the Virginia Company, and they failed to survive in almost every case. Um, in eight, or excuse me, in 1650, Franciscan missionaries plant mission, a grape brought up from the Baja, uh, from Baja, California, Mexico, and as far south as Peru. In Texas Hill Country, Arizona, and New Mexico, and by the late 1600s, California. In 1740, the Alexander grape, an accidental hybrid of the Vinifera and Lambrusca species, is discovered by John Alexander in the woods near William Penn's Pennsylvania home. The grape will be widely planted throughout the United States in the first part of the 19th century with modest success. In 1769, Franciscan missionaries um, uh, established uh, California's first vineyard and winery near present-day San Diego. In 1798, <clears throat> John DeFore establishes America's first commercial winery, aptly named First Vineyard, on the banks of the Kentucky River near um, in what is now Nicholasville. The vineyard still succumbs, um, the vineyard uh, succumbed to frost and was abandoned by the uh, by 1809. In 1830, Nicholas Longworth. Uh, founded America's first commercially successful winery near Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, he soon became uh, famous for his sparkling wines made from the native Catawba grape. In 1846, Maine was the first state to go completely dry uh, with rumblings of pro uh, prohibition. In 1860, Pleasant Valley Wine Company, uh, America's first bonded winery was founded in New York's Finger Lakes regions. In 1861, California's first commercial winery was established in St. Helena. In 1879, um, Inglenook Winery in the town of Rutherford uh, was established, and the first Bordeaux-style wines were produced in the U.S. and um, won international acclaim. In 1920, prohi uh, prohibition begins, and for the next 13 years, um, um, hurled uh, American wine industry into obscurity for almost half a century. In 1933, uh, prohibition was repealed, and out of nearly 2,500 wineries in the U.S., prior to uh, prohibition, less than 100 remained. And then in 1965, uh, Robert Mondavi broke away from the uh, Charles Krug estate to found his own winery and ushered in the modern era of winemaking. Um, in 1976, the famous uh, Judgment of Paris turns the world's attention to California when a panel of French wine experts scores several of the uh, California state wines higher than top Bordeaux and white Burgundy in a blind tasting. So um, that's our that's the history of wine in the United States. And um, did that how that didn't take me very long. <laughs> I'm, I'm a person of, of few words. Um, we do have um, our wine of the month club and um, whoever invited you on the call, you can get back with that person uh, to um, get more information. Um, you can join our wine club uh, on three different levels as an estate member, um, a reserve member, or a grand crew member. Um, all of our wines are uh, small batch wines, so they're, they have no uh, additives, um, so they don't give you a headache. That's the, that's the best thing I like about our wines is they don't give me a headache when I drink them. Um, we have several different ways to get paid, and um, 
you can get with your the person who invited you and they can uh, explain all of that to you. And um, that's that's pretty much my story for today. Anybody have any questions? Great job, Nell. I love all that history information. It's there's a lot of we all need to this. hear that. Yeah, this is this is some good content, Nell. Thank you. I tried, to read it, I tried to read it slow, so it take longer. Oh, it's good. And now what I like to see it done is uh, I want to see pages built with this, right? Um, blogging content. Uh, I'm sharing that. My wife, my seat went down. Hold on. I did buy a new chair. And if you guys notice, as I always say, my, I, I've broken this chair after like seven years. And, and it's, it, it's got a lifetime repair, but I just want a new chair. So I got, so it, it's, it's okay to invest in your business tools, right? My office chair has to be perfect because I take cat naps sometimes. And uh, I'm just bringing this up. This is random now, but you're, you're reminding me of something you're talking about. But the, knowing more and more about wine, knowing more and more about the regions, information about it, just gives you content to write, gives you content for keywords and stuff that's out there. And it also, it also helps you look like an expert when people are reading that information. And then when you refer it to Wine Ambassador, you're literally doing a subconscious endorsement that, hey, as an expert, this is what I recommend. That's the way it comes across. That's a good thing. So, so the powerful stuff about what Nell just gave you is it's going to be great information to blog about, find a keyword about, and then refer them over to Wine Ambassador. That's, that's what we want to be doing, right? So we're connecting the cell psychology of information, 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 and recommendation, information, 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 recommendation, so that they're going through that. And, and it's just going to endorse without saying we have the best wines in the world. It's going to basically say that. And, and, and it's done in an indirect way based on verification, validation, and expert-directed information. It's awesome now. I, I'm, I'm here to, I love this. Well, now, the, now, how do, now how to execute it, right? Two of the things that I found um, when, I was, when I was researching this, two of the things that I found that kind of amazed me was that um, the United States is number two in the world in wine consumption and that Cincinnati and Ohio are uh, so prominent in uh, in wine. I did not realize that Cincinnati had such a uh, wine history. I mean, I live in Ohio. <laughs> do, do you know that wine production is in every state in the U.S.? Yeah, yeah, I didn't know um, that. It's like eighty-two percent comes from California, mm -hmm. and then it's broken down the other the other states. New York creates a lot of wine, um, relatively speaking. But even some of the like states like Ohio. They outproduce some countries. Yeah, and, and, and we do drink our own. We bring our own wine in, and 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 then just keep this in mind. Like you bring that up there, but you guys, the the number one, the number one average sell, the highest selling wines come from where? California. What part of California? Napa and Sonoma Valley. That's why we're there. So always. You want to aim at that direction and understand it, but that's the thing is there. Like, yeah, there's a lot in the U.S., but, you know, we pick wines from Napa and so You can't argue with it. It's just, That's just where the world is right now, and it's been that way for a long time. Um, there, There's, um, you know, so, it, but it's good to have different contrasting details that go in, but always refer back to us, right? Mm -hmm. No, we kind of get to control the narrative. We're the ones writing it, and and that's how to execute that information. But, you know, it's, it's, it's fun. You know, I've traveled to so many wineries over my years, and I'll continue to do so. I mean, it, it, it takes a, 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 even a half of an invitation and I'm gonna show up. So the, you know, I've been through a lot of wineries in Oregon and in Washington and along that West Coast, and there is a difference. You know, it's not just perceived value, there is a taste difference. Um, whatever God did over there in that Napa and Sonoma in those valleys, the way that the crispness and I mean you guys got to witness that on in the in that, that that's on, on the morning like it goes from extreme colds to extreme heats that tempers that tempers that grape in a different way right um the, the terrier the, the soil and the, and the way that you, you guys got to see that there on the, on the hills and they, they they do the vines all the way up the steep side too and and the water dissipates down differently and, and those grapes get different amounts of, of water from the top down 
which contrasts the, the grapes and, and the taste and the taste that comes from those grapes. All that stuff is there in, in that thing, but that crisp and the heat, that makes a difference. No, even that is something that a lot of people don't understand. Most you know, you guys can look back to your times when you got in, involved with wine, when you started knowing about wine, not just drinking it, but understanding it, the knowledge is is vast. What you just did now is gave a bunch more information out there, which is great to put out there, more keywords to stuff to execute on, but then make sure we control the narrative back to wine ambassador. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to everybody. All roads, lead to wine. All roads always lead to wine. You'll see that. It's just the way the life goes. Like it's our food. It's our food. Um Okay, let's see. Um, holiday times on the holiday pages. You guys, um, wine sales are, they're always high. There's no like dips really. If there is a spike, it's during the holiday season. It does go up. And it doesn't really come down much until like mid-January. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, opportunities and, you know, people consume more. Well, there's just a lot more parties, right? A lot more get-togethers. And um, I'm going to anticipate this year as being different. Um, because of the COVID crap, a lot of people missed out on gatherings last year. Just so you know, we don't like to miss out. So we always overcompensate the following chance we get. We have to make up for it. I've seen it, right? I've seen it with us. Like, you know, the, the first time we had a gathering after a space, we, I mean, we almost overdid it. Because you're like so happy to have it again because we really relish our time with, with, with others. So, you guys, this is not the time to take off the gas. It's the time to press on more and push things out there. And, you know, there's going to be way more gatherings than usual because people are going to be making up for lost time. That's what I'm anticipating in my directions, my manifestations, and with the stuff that I'm doing and putting out there is I expect more and more gatherings. Um, I'm, I'm seeing fundraisers start up again. I'm seeing the, the dinner fundraisers go up again, the silent auctions going up again. You know, those are things to get in front of and have, you know, and have a great time. And, um, you know, if, you know, and, oh man, and, and I'm going to go, I'm going to go on this. Like I just, I up my order and, and it's placed now. I've got 60,000 QR code stickers coming. I went to 60,000. I, I upped my, uh, my commitment to myself. I want to see if I can place 60,000 in a year. I'm breaking it down by day. I got kids, right? I got kids. I'm going to make do it. I, I want my QR code on every restaurant teepee in, in the state of Utah. And then everywhere I travel, I'm just going to have fun with it. Like I just told you guys, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to be like borderline vandalistic. It's just a sticker, right? Like I'm just going to put oh, it up on the other places. I see you getting that price down to half a penny at like 20,000 at 60,000. Do they owe you money? <laughs> I think they're paying. It's so. It's it's such a that this is. There is there's vantages in mass. Um, I, I was gonna do a hundred thousand, but I just like, you know, I'm gonna maybe I want a different angle of it. I, I mean, I'm gonna do. I did. I committed to sixty thousand. Maybe I'm not thinking big enough. It's it's not even three hundred bucks. Like one time cost to market. Now I gotta do the labor. I gotta put it out there. Um, I sample like crazy and, and I'm going to open up every one of my sample packs and put one on every single one and close those sample packs back up. I'm going to do that. But um, I, I've been sampling just a few. That's how I've been doing it. Um, the sample packs are nice to mill out. I, uh, I, I, I use that service, you know, but, but when I'm out and about, I mean, I, I don't know if you guys realize it. I mean, I help my kids with their car stuff. So I'm, I see our garage guys I, and uh, we have this awesome, um, it's, uh, it's owned by one guy's name is Steve and we get along great. The kids get treated really well. They take care of us when we bring our, all our cars in, we, you know, we got a lot of cars and they've been, they've been servicing us for a good, I guess, 12 years, but I, I dropped off some brains there. Right. And I already got feedback back. They're like, Oh my gosh, I feel so much better. And they, you know, they're alert. They're trying to go, but they consume rocks, the energy drinks like mad. All these places do. It's just a matter of just dropping off and having to change it. And I don't care. I'm going to, I'll invest a box there. You, you, every time the BOGO comes out, I buy a ton, right? Well, I dropped off wine there um, three months ago. I dropped off wine today or yesterday. Sorry. I, and I gave them uh, two Freedom because I, the, the one likes Chardonnay, two Freedom, and then two of the more of the Muse. 
Um, it was one. It was the uh, the Cleo one, right? And uh, the Pinot. And they are. They've already. They had some last night with steak, and they're like, "Okay, now I got to get some." I. The one thing I'm missing is my QR code on that, because what I should say is, "Oh, just click on the QR code and order." So now I got to call up and follow up, right? So that that's the one thing that I got with this. So I'm, I'm ordering some stickers now for my wine business that I can put everywhere. And, and, and I'm going to put them on all the bottles I gift. Tanya and I will probably gift 20 to 30 bottles minimum this, this year. And I'm going to put that on there. And when I give it to them, say, oh, when you want to order some of this for yourself, just click on that QR, QR code. This one gives you the tasting notes. This one, you can just go right to ordering. I'm going to have them go right to my fine wines page. I'm actually making that right now. Um, and I'm in that mode. And it'll be like, you know, I'll spend $300 and get 60,000 of those. And, and the thing is, is I think I'm going to put one on one side of the, the TP and then one on the other side. So there'll be wine and then the other one. I'm just going to do them both. Same effort, one sticker, one sticker, right? Same effort. And, and just put it out there because it, and it, it'll look aesthetically pleasing. There'll be a QR code in the top left and a QR code in the top right. I, I'm going to feed the curiosity cats. You guys, you, you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share something with you. You guys ever go into a grocery store and you go buy their bulletin boards? I'm going to put my sticker on everything, everything. And I'm going to put multiple stickers on everything. But Niall, do you, remember, do you remember the days of the flyers? Like it was yesterday. I'm going to tell you guys a secret. A hundred flyers did nothing. A thousand flyers did nothing. 5,000 flyers, the phone started ringing. At 8,000, you could almost answer the phone fast enough. We're not answering phones. We're sending them to our pages. Do you guys know how we all want more and more traffic to come through? This, this became an offline way to help the online world, all due to COVID and the QR code training. I'm taking advantage of it. Yeah, and I can remember spending more than $300 for one ad in one newspaper in one city for one day. Oh, absolutely. Well, think about the flyer cost, right? I mean, I had a printer, I had a printer that would do a thousand flyers for 21 bucks. Okay, so 10,000 was $210. And that's what I would do every month. I'm gonna get 60,000 stickers for $300. And they're going to be placed in permanent places that no one's going to be offended by because it's going to look so perfect on those teepees that are there or on the bulletin boards. I'm not going to get like absolute vandalistic and put on people's cars or anything like a flyer, but I can definitely put them in a lot of different locations. And I'm going to see more. I was, I walked through the airports, right? A lot. Kenny and I, and you know, the, every there's, there's QR code placements on everything. And, and I, I just, I looked at the laws. There, there really isn't a law about putting stickers unless it's like destroying property. So they do have removable stickers that you can buy. I'm just not buying them. I'm buying the paper ones for now, but they do have removable ones if you're worried about it. You can so, soda machines were one of my favorites, either on the side or the top. They don't want to scrape that off and ruin the paint and do all that work. And you know, yeah. if, you, if you put one on the windshield of a, or Mercedes. Um, I don't know if they want to scrape either. So maybe. Hmm. Yeah, I, I'm just saying. There's a lot of places we can put these, and you know, you could. It's it's just it's just interesting, right? Like on the tops of. Uh, I mean, I could list. Like I could like if I go to Walmart, and I randomly go through the vitamin section and just put it on the top of vitamin things, people are going to check them out anyway because they look for information. I could come up with a million ideas. 60,000 in a year is my commitment to myself. I'm going to pass them out by, from the time I get them, I'm going to have a year to give out 60,000 on my biohacking page. And wine, I'm going to put everywhere. You know, it's 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 a perfect business card in in a, in a sense, and you can put them on your business cards. You can also you know print out your business cards with the QR code. Put the fine wine on the left, the other one on the right. You know, I do the. Uh, um, it's it's just there. I you know I can put them on everything. So you know we 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 cross market our things that go on. It, it's out there, and and then here here's the here's the thing. What do you think the lifetime 
the lifetime span of a QR code placed in the right place, it could be lasting there for years. Every amusement park I go to, anywhere I can find a place I can put a sticker, people are curious. They're in lines. Because people are in line for a lot of things. They have their phone with them. Give them something to scan and just be curious about. All right, I'm done with that. It's 1036. Now, what else we got? Have some people with their hands raised for questions. Well, I, go ahead and take them. They're your questions. I can't believe everything that Nell gave to us and everything you just covered, which was a lot. And we've only used 36 minutes. I know. <laughs> well, it's actually 26 because. Because I took 10. All right. It's like when you're having, what's that? Time flies fast. You're having fun. These are so good. There's always so many golden nuggets. You don't want it to end. Um, and it's only 36 minutes already. It feels like we've been, you, you've both been sharing for an hour each. Well, we need to go to work and keep building pages, get the stuff out there. Um, Renee, Renee has a question. Go ahead, Renee. Okay. Hi. I just wanted to add to Nell's information. During the prohibition in California, they would take the, the grapes and whatever they were doing to the process, they would sell them in the size of bricks, dried grape in the size of bricks, send them out with instructions on how to make wine. Mm -hmm. And this was on a documentary I was watching. So that was pretty interesting stuff. Entrepreneurs are innovative. Entrepreneurs yeah. are innovative, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the entrepreneurial spirit is the American spirit. Right. Uh, can I ask one more question? Um, as far as talking to a restaurant, do we not do that yet? Or is somebody oh, else going okay. to present this? Oh, my gosh. Renee, it's coming. Okay. It's coming. There, there, I, I, this is, I'm going to, it might actually be November on this one guys, but there is a tool coming out. It's really close. It's, it's on me to finish. The programming is literally all done. Um, I'm working on the verbiage. I'm working on the landing pages, but we have a program for restaurants. We have a program for influencers that's coming out to you guys. And it's, it's literally on my back to get done. I'm doing some testing. We're going to be rolling that out there. It's going to have some solid rules to it, um, but it's going to help with the restaurant angle and, and going forward. It's coming. And, I, and I'm trying to get it done um, in October. I just got, they're just, they're, I have a list of priorities I'm working through guys. And, and I'm very hands-on on this one, but yeah, it's coming Renee. And it'll be something that we can offer a restaurant and it'll give them, you know, if they see the vision of it, they can run with it. We have some that really want it already. And, and they get access to our wines, but they also get access to building up, you know, an income stream with, with customers and having their own wine club, basically, uh, white labeled under us or I dust. We're working on all of that, Renee. It's coming. Okay, thank you. Jane, you can unmute. Hello, Richard and Jane. Good, Good morning. morning. Hello, everybody. Thank you for all your enthusiastic suggestions, Rory. I think you just are just never, never dry of ideas. And thank you very much. Um, I have a question about the best way to use the landing pages for Wine Ambassador and Vela Vida. Uh, okay. For example, uh, okay, do we put the, the link in our, our ad that we're that we're posting? Does the link to the landing page go to the ad and then the person goes to the landing page and then to our blog and then to the website? You put your blog page, you go right to your offer page every time and your offer page to the, the landing page. So when you're talking about a landing page, you're talking about like the join link or the product information link, right? Okay, so I, the, I when we market, we like we have it, we have the PBS. You want to run everything through your PBS offer pages, period. Because then we control we control the narrative. We control the message and where they go to, right? Let's say that a problem happens and they change the way the linkings work. Well, we just go change on our page. We didn't lose our marketing. And we want to send them to our page first because what if they go there and they're interested, but they don't buy today, but they see something else on our page, right? Mm -hmm. Take advantage of how the PBS works. That's our marketing house. 
Right. right. The door that brought them in is the ad. They see that, but maybe they're not ready to buy that today. But oh, on these categories, oh, I'm interested in that and that and that. That's why we send them to our offer pages first. So we go to our offer page, then we go to the actual offer, right? We, we go to the landing page. That's the order we always do it. Make sense? Okay. Yes, yes, thanks for clarifying that. Yeah, yeah it gets confusing when you go out there and, and you know, and, and you'll hear other people say, well, I just sent them to my link. Well, we need to always go through our PBS. That's the power of the PBS. We always want to control where that goes. And it's just, it's just in case there's a problem, then we can fix it. So there isn't a problem. And also we're placing, we do all this work to put this ad out there. Sometimes those ads are out there for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days a year. We want to get the best bang for the buck for that entire time. Offer pages, we control, they're never going down. As long as we keep our hosting bill paid, our sites are always up and directing where we want to go. And if something breaks, we can fix it. Always do it that way. Okay. Anything else? That's it. You clarified awesome. it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Debbie? First of all, uh, thank you so much for all these new amazing tools. It's, my mind is just racing on a lot of questions. But just a quick question. This QR code thing is awesome. Um, it goes to a landing page. My question is, is can you put the, uh, the QR code in your text now or would that be jumping the gun? Is that jumping? The, the, so I, I'm gonna tell you this, um, and this is really good. When I do my uh, my text messaging and in the text now, I do exactly the th everything I do in the V marketing. It's the same messages whether I do SDs, one on ones. It's all the same thing. I do not send images and I do not send links because they get blocked. Okay, they, they just do. And and I Betty, they didn't used to. We used to be able to send images, and, but now they get blocked. Right? It's just the it's just the nature of the cell phone carriers, and because there's so many bad players out there, they. We're, we're lucky to get a text message and go through it all. But so I'm not going to put that out there because it just doesn't work. And, okay. and, and if I'm going to do the work, I want to make sure the message gets through. Even if it's, if it's not the glorious, glamorous image or a QR code, the QR code, that's going to go as a graphic, which they can click on, but it's going to get blocked. I'm going to tell you right now, you send an image, it gets blocked. Okay, well, like the second question would be, well. Now, if it's to somebody you know, if it's somebody you know, it's a onesie twosie, that's a different story. Send it. How about your emails that you're sending out for your positive results? Same, same thing. You can try it. I, I just, attachments and, and images usually get screened or blocked by their spam controls. And so okay. simple is better. I mean, even having a couple of links, it gets spammed. An image. They, they block it. Um, it's, 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 it's a crazy world. And that's why you cannot replace getting them on the phone. So I'll just put this out there. I don't care if it's V marketing. Um, you know, if it's V marketing and you're setting an appointment, you're doing the text only, and you're not talking to them, fine. But as an instructor, you, you need to get on the phone. So I send out my three text messages and then I start calling. Okay. And I call them after that because they're going to see my number in there. And I don't, I don't know if you guys realize this, but on a cell phone, if, I'm calling you and I've sent you a text message. It, it'll actually have my text message show up when you answer the phone. It makes it look like you've been communicating with me. It's awesome. All right, thank you. Thank That's you. why I do it in, that, in that, that sequence. So, you know, you can't beat massive action and consistency. You can't. So you gotta, you wanna consistently be putting this stuff out there, making the calls and, and, and just having it go. And one last question, retail sales for Velveeta. I don't see anything in their back office to where like you can go in and try to get it in a gas station like the five hour energy drinks or anything like that. Okay, I mean, I know so you, gotta, you gotta have a million dollar life or policy for Walmart, but I'm talking little mom and pop gas stations. And so so like Betty, I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer that, okay? And it's the same with wine. Okay. Okay, okay. so with wine, if they have a license to sell liquor and they can, it depends on the state where they're at, they'll know the laws because they're in that business. They, they can buy and sell it. It's, it's free commerce. So the, the thing with Velveeta, there is no retail supply chain that they're supporting because it, it, it they kind of can't, right? And they're not going to. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak for it um, the, the way I would as a CEO. It, you're going to, but if I own a convenience store, 
and I want to buy Bella Vita and market it myself, I can. That's my risk. I can do that. They can leave that open for that. It's a suggested thing you can do, but the company is never going to endorse that or make a program for that. Can't. Okay. But like I currently had to get a part-time job because I moved out into a small little town of 436, which is really right? small. Um, and it's, it's a gas station. Okay. Okay. Um, I've, I've, I've already connected with the, uh, basically the market manager, the, the right. regional, he could become a customer and do it himself, right? He could, be, he could become a, a customer or a, a, rep. Member. He, a member. Yeah, a member. So, oh, rep. so yeah, so I have a, I have a very uh, good friend of mine and uh, he owns several, they're called head shops. They sell like um, alternative smoking and yes, they yes. sell weight loss and everything else. And they're going to be taking the Vela Vita in. They're going to be buying it as, as a rep. You know, the more you buy up front, you get discounts. They're going to be buying it at that discount. And then anytime there's a BOGO, they're going to stock up. Right. Right. But they're right. and, and they're, they're going to be sampling. And um, this is this is why that QR code. This actually is a solution for his biggest issue is if we sample, how do we stop them from not just go finding it online or doing something else? And that's why the QR right. code will help. OK, so thank you so much. Adding that to it, but <laughs> they can sample it or they can sell it like a, a like a three pack or whatever they want to do. It's an open commerce, you know, I'm world to ask you to clarify the market. Was that James? Oh, she made it herself. Thank you, Roy. I, I'm going to get it going. That's for sure. Thank you. Okay. So yeah. And, and I'll tell you this, those small areas, that, that's a great place to do it. And you know, we're entrepreneurs, right? Everybody's an entrepreneur that's in a business world, you know, having another, you know, means of that. And I'll tell you this, like I, I'll, I'll donate samples to launch a thing. Like we did it with Hung and, you know, he's bringing customers from his nail salon every week, you know? So, you know, now he supplies his own samples and everything else, but it's, you know, it's, you know, they come to the gas station, they're buying those energy drinks, they're buying other things already, you know, having an, another product available to them, you know, here, try this. This is, you know, liquid collagen product for, you know, your hair and nails. It's got a QR code. You can order direct or buy them here. That, that's just, you know, especially in a small community, we see the same people over and over and over again. It's just being smart. It, it, you know, I was the, the market manager, the manager, he said it's okay if I even sold it to the associates there that work there because I've got them all hooked to it, but they just. The and money. you're working for a very, that's awesome. The, a the, very the, small hometown. It's called Double B's. It's a very small hometown store, I guess. I don't know. Um, yeah, that's awesome. They're even letting me put flyers. So I'm ready to buy the stickers and start going all around. Yeah, Put stickers everywhere, like you said. But thank you so much. Yeah, you know, and and don't even though a small town, I'll tell you this: people go through small towns, right? People are all sorts of people are traveling. Um, you know, you know, between that and then and then truck drivers. If yep. anybody here knows a truck driver, is a truck driver, is is a neighbors with a truck driver, and you haven't given them brain yet, you are a horrible person. <laughs> like it would help them so much in their in, in their whether they're local or even distant drivers. So, and truck stops and everything else. I mean, a sample with that on there, they're always willing to try stuff. But if you guys saw the diet that they have options that they usually take, it's horrible. Truck drivers are usually in really bad health because, and, and that's, guys, we need them in our life big time, right? Trucking, without trucking, we don't have product. We don't have anything. And, and yet their, their health is very much at risk with their lifestyle and we can help them. So that's where I bring in, you're a horrible person. If you're not sharing brain with a truck driver, you know, give them, give them a bunch to try. Right. I mean, it, it, it's helping, it's helping our roads, you know, be safer. It's helping everything. And they're spending a lot of money on crap. Anyway, they, they buy those, you know, the no dose items, the, the stuff to keep them alert, the caffeine pills, the, the energy drinks, all that stuff that's horrible, they're already consuming. Give them an, an, a natural alternative and think about it. If, if they're on the trifecta effect, how much better are they going to be health-wise, right? Pretty cool. Okay, um, Danielle, you can un unmute. Okay, so I have a question about um, the wines. Perfect. So is there any sulfites in the wines? Absolutely, Danielle. I'll go over this. Sulfites should have to be in all wines. Without sulfites, there's no preservative, and the wines could go, it would literally become, they could become bad. When okay. wine is naturally made, 
in the right process, it creates sulfites in the fermentation process, natural sulfites. It actually creates its own preservative. Those are good. Okay. Where the mm -hmm. problem is, is when I, if we speed the process up, we have to put artificial sulfites in so that's preserved. Artificial are where the problems and headaches come from. Okay. Natural sulfites are good. Man-made, not good. Artificial sulfites, not good for our body. Our body don't, they don't process them the right, right? It's not a natural thing. It, it takes up more resources, more oxygen, more water, more um, amino acids that we have to, to, uh, to absorb those properly. And that's what creates fatigue and headaches. Right. Okay. So um, my mom doesn't drink uh, red wines because she's gluten. Uh, she has uh, celiac disease. Okay. So, um, and I'm not sure what is in those wines as opposed to like, she likes to drink like a Moscato. Right. And so, she doesn't get effects from that. All right. So I have a, I have a, a best friend with celiac disease actually, and he drinks red wine just fine. Um, our red wines just fine. Um, the the tannin the tannins are stronger in a red wine that might be causing some stuff. But you know, I, I you know she should probably take it to her doctor and explain. Like I don't I've never heard a celiac. There's no I mean there's no gluten in wine. There's okay. there's no wheat in wine at yeah. all. Okay. Um, in fact, it's it's grapes. Right. Let's just, all right. Okay. So it's grapes. There's no there's no gluten. Um, it's um, you know, it's, it, even our stuff is non-GMO, okay? It's, it's awesome. But the tannins and the, the other additives that, that are in cheap wines or the cheap and wine process wines, they might be causing issues with the celiac disease because, and that could be a problem in, in itself because there's other things in there that shouldn't be in there. They're going to affect things and celiac disease are going to be more prone and more sensitive to other things going on. I'm not a doctor. Right. I'm just building this for my friend. I mean, there's right. some, some things that he should be able to eat, but he can't because it's 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 the way it's been processed or whatever else. Even processed yeah. foods causes him issues when they shouldn't because of what they based on what they should be, what we think they are, but what they really are is a problem because they've been processed. And in that and in that artificial things are in there that upsets the the, the elements of the celiacs. Yes. Okay. Yeah. She uh, has. And again, uh, I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving any medical advice. I'm just giving you examples of what I know from my friend with celiac disease. But um, yes. when it comes to wine, our, our wines are, I mean, they're, they're naturally made, uh, you know, and, and it's one of those things they can try it if it doesn't upset things to go forward. And they can always take it to their doctor to check, but proper wine doesn't have, I mean, it should be fine for that. Okay. All right. Thank you. You bet. Hey, Daniel. Now, I have a personal testimony on that as well. I could never drink wine, uh, red wines. I could only drink Pinot Grigio's. Um, and I used to get some spate lace and oscillates from another country. But it was always the sweet, easy whites. And Pinot Grigio was my favorite. The only one I could drink. Anytime I tried a red wine from a grocery store or a liquor store, I'd get a headache and rot gut. And I just, it just felt horrible until... I was introduced to fine wines. Thank you. I had the same problem with red wines. Um, I couldn't drink them until I got introduced to this wine company. Now I can drink red wines and uh, don't have a problem. So, Joel, do you have a question? Yeah. So, number one, um, I've been taking the youth, and it's been unbelievable how much I have to shave. <laughs> like, almost every day. Like, it's crazy. I, I have to shave almost every day or else I look like this. <laughs> um, anyways, I, I don't know if any of you guys know that, but it's been crazy. Um, and now um, I appreciate uh, this month. You, you've, you've done a great job. I, I know you've been nervous about it, but you've done a wonderful job. You know, there's some great information. So Thank you. Thank very you. I much appreciate it now. Um, now my uh, okay, question is um, wine. <laughs> the weather is getting cooler here. Um, is there a chance I'm going to get my wine before Christmas? Uh, okay, so first of all, that's a really good question. Okay, um, and um, I'm going to tell you, and actually, I, I need to put out something. I've been a little um, busy, and that's a really bad excuse because you got to make time for it. Um, your wine's all shipped to Canada on Monday. Oh, yes. And, and on, that, on that Canadian note, um, let me explain where this is, and it's about communication. So the holidays are coming up. 
And with the holidays also comes the winters. And, and when the temperature, and we have an insurance issue, okay, guys, it's fine wine. Everything we talk about with it being, you know, a true fine wine made the right way and it's healthier for you is absolutely true. The other thing about that is it's a perishable good. And in the U.S., we don't have a problem now because the logistics are in place where we can do temperature control shipping. So we can literally ship almost year round. There's some areas we got to pause because the, the freezing conditions are such that when it goes from UPS to your house, it can freeze. OK, so we can't ship during that part. Otherwise, we have a way to get it from point A to point B in temperature control. It doesn't freeze. It doesn't does it melt in the heat. Doesn't destroy the perishable good of fine wine. Canada. Canada, we don't have temperature control solutions for, for the entirety of, of Canada. And, and uh, it's a problem. Now, it's, it's only a problem if we don't communicate. So right now, you know, we just went through a really odd summer. And, it, and I mean, here it's the, the end of September, really. And we were barely able to start shipping because the heat index has been so high. And if it's too hot, we don't, our insurance will not cover our wine. They won't, they won't. They're saying you're shipping under conditions we don't cover. And so and it's basically 84 degrees or 83, 83-ish degrees. If we ship over that, they don't cover the insurance. And if it's under a certain degrees, they don't cover the insurance. And, and it becomes a very, it's, it's just the problem. So Canada, we ship case minimums, which means if someone's getting four bottles on their monthly order, they, they accumulate and they ship out every three months. If they get six, it's every two months. If it's a case, it's every month. And the holidays are coming up and if they got gift giving or stuff going on, they need to order them now before, the, before it starts freezing. So I recommend them ordering cases now and then letting the rest just accumulate until it can ship when it gets frozen. So we'll continue to ship as we can, but once we can't, we're not gonna ship because it's gonna get damaged. It's a guarantee pretty much. And we have no insurance repercussions on it because we shipped outside the temperature guidance they've given us in the insurance. So if you're in Canada and the holidays are coming up, order some cases. That's, that's my best advice, order some cases and you know the rest will be coming you know, later and, um, and that's what I would do. And that's, you guys, we're getting it in Canada which was told we were gonna not be able to do, it was gonna be impossible. Well, we solved that. We just gotta deal with mother nature and, and God and, and the way he has things set up. And since there's not a logistical solution for it, this is what we have to do. And at least we can get wine to Canada, Joel, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah you're telling me that. Uh, you got wine on its way. We're working on getting the tracking where it's more re reportable, where, where it's reporting. Yeah. Um, but the way that we do our process to get it through customs and, and handle it for you so it just gets delivered to your door, um, the tracking isn't in sync yet. Um, in case you guys didn't know, we do things differently than everybody else. And that's why we were able to win. We, out, we, we figured out a solution. The solution doesn't always come with everything we need in it yet, but we, we, we get that done first. Getting it delivered to your door without the headache and hassle of the duties and taxes and the paperwork, that was number one. We've done that. Now we, now we aim for perfection in all the other, <laughs> excuse me, all the other areas. But uh, the temperature thing is probably going to be with us for a while. Um, I've, we met with some temperature control solutions. Um, I can tell you this. It makes it so expensive. It's, we can't do it. Yeah. You know, if you guys want to spend six hundred dollars a case, no problem. It'll be delivered to your door and insured and everything. It just doesn't work. You guys are getting you guys are getting a case ship virtually for the same that people spend to get their monthly ship. We made it work. We made the economics work. We just it, that's the that's the that's the the caveat of it is you need to order cases when the weather is good. Now, parts of Canada, it's going to be hard to ship to. Other parts might be easier to. We're getting that down to where you know it's not an all or none situation, but. You know, this summer has just been super hot and a, and a long heat, and that's just to deter it. So um, I, I'll tell you, this is what what I do as a as as a wine connoisseur and a lover of wine is I don't let my wine supply get below 500 bottles. I just don't. I just keep it stocked. I just keep it stocked, and and I keep replenishing it. And and that's that's what I recommend for you know everyone. You know, and, and, and if you're not in a situation where you think you can't afford it, just change your mindset, get things going and put that as a goal is, hey, I want to have wine on stock all the time. That's a great goal. Make it happen. Right. And, and it gets it gets it gets more and more fun, and especially. Oh, my gosh. The wines we're, we're kicking out right now. It, I mean, our wines are amazing and, and, and it's good to have. But, you know, 
every wine we have is something you want to already repeat, yet we're bringing new vintages out all the time. So it, we have high quality issues here. All right, Tom. Right, it's now one o'clock. Oh, it is. Yes. All right, let's do Tom Arnold real quick. Okay. Um, yeah, I wanted to know uh, what's the update on the infomercials? Um, great question. And I'm, I'm going to go over it. We, uh, we went through some things. Um, we, we got one done. And uh, I, I went over the actual contracts and the stuff that we had to look at. Just so you guys know, we have more leads coming in and more things to work on than you guys are even keeping up with. So taking on a huge expense of the infomercials just doesn't make sense. We have more leads. If you guys can catch up on the lead gen, I'll add more leads. We just, we're just, we're not even touching you guys. You guys, we have, we have so many leads. You guys aren't working that adding more leads it just becomes ridiculous. Like I'm laughing about it, you know, and the, and, and the people that would, that have earned the right to add, to get on those leads when we turn them on are, 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 are keeping up with the numbers coming in. I don't think they even have time outside of what they're doing now. So it, so Tom, get working on the leads we have. We, we got something that's measurable. We're already spending money on it all. It, 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 I wanted to keep growing and growing, but it's, it's not happening. You guys kick up, we'll turn them back on. But infomercials have a big cost. And I'm not going to sink more money in because I like that model where I pay it for you guys, right? We like that model. But what I don't like is the fact that I have a lot of marketing that's still not even being hit by you guys. Like, we are is, is there anybody here that doesn't know who to talk to anybody here that doesn't have somebody to talk to didn't think so so when that becomes a problem we'll turn it on we got really excited about the partnership and where it was going to go but i'll tell you it it, it doesn't make sense we, we're not even touching the leads we have coming in now you guys we're not even touching them the, the amount of leads that we have of, of stuff coming in to, to work is is and that's where we're getting on to next anyway but so Tom, we have it. We're going to turn it on, but it just at some point it's like, wow, why are we doing this? We can't even keep up with what we have. Yeah. It's a high quality issue. You guys, most everybody doesn't have enough marketing. They're trying to drive for more. We have too much marketing. So get to work, please. <laughs> please. We got to set, you know, the, between the V marketing, the SDs, the 101s, um, we have plenty to go that's on a proven process. Mm -hmm. but thanks for asking i was actually going to bring it up on a training there's some decisions that were made literally just weeks ago on this and it's just like wh why why are we going to spend more money on something that's not exactly proven when we can't even take care of what we have that's proven that's coming in by well i mean so much more than you guys are touching mm -hmm. there's a business side behind it i make it real easy for you guys but there really is money being spent that's got to be you know figured out you know we have a three-year return on our money right now infomercials is is a it's it's a twilight zone of, of issues and effects we don't know yet and i it's just it's kind of dumb money when we can't even keep up with what's already proven and, and kicking butt and in case you guys didn't know we're doing really well we're getting bigger and growing even when other people aren't we're doing awesome all right just imagine when the world's back to like normalcy or what we should we, well whatever that means i actually don't even know what that means anymore it, it may always be this chaotic, and yet we're doing fine. So get to work. Get to work, revel it, run in it. You got, if you guys ever wanted to know something, there's times in, in business where you feast or you famine, and it's in everything. There's cycles. We're in a feast mode, and if you guys aren't feasting, you're just sitting by and watching, watching things happen. Go look at your dreams, your goals, make them bigger, make your whys bigger, because you have everything you need to make it happen. Just go to work. Go to work. We you guys, we have it. We have it as a system. It's, it's not even a, it might work if you do this. No, it will work if you follow the system. It's a proven path. Go, 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 go. All right. Love you all. I think, um, I know there was training on the other uh, triple R two, four, seven calls. It's supposed to be going five minutes ago. I, I ran over on everything. Nell, you were awesome and amazing. And thank you. Thank you. I, I just realized this is your last time for a while. And Great, great work. Um, who, who, who's training next Saturday? Niall. Stacy, who's training next week? I believe it would be Miss Ashley, Ashley since she just finished doing the wine and dine. That's where, yes, and that's going to be awesome. So we'll see you guys next Saturday on that. And uh, 
I'm going to be, I'm going to try to, we got more stuff coming out on Tuesday. We're going to be following up with more and more of our kiosk stuff on the Saturdays. Guys, it's run time. Holiday time, the weight loss time. We got this. Do activities, get it out there. Just follow the system.